It's a lot to dissect in that story. Let's bring in uh, Catalina Marchandebra of Truth or Fake uh, to give us more on the situation. We just heard in that report, Catalina, that Russia uh, is saying and continues to say uh, that the Ukraine, that uh, Russia, sorry, that the UK, uh, the US and the UK were all involved in, 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 in the planning of this attack, even though it was a group of Islamists that carried it out. Um, what can you tell us about uh, what you're seeing online? That's right, Mark. U.S., Ukraine and uh, the U.K., despite the Islamic State group having claimed responsibility for the attack last week in uh, Moscow, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, continues uh, to insist uh, that Ukraine was involved in this, uh, this attack. And this uh, Blame Ukraine campaign went as far as Russian national TV, as Russia's NTV broadcast uh, this uh, video alleging to show Ukraine's uh, top security official, Oleski Danilov, where he allegedly confirms in this interview view uh, that Ukraine was involved in this deadly attack. Uh, just a reminder also that Danilov uh, Oleski was uh, just dismissed from his duties as a security uh, defense counsel uh, today, just today. So here's the video uh, where he allegedly says, we're going to translate it for you. Is it fun in Moscow today? I think it's a lot of fun. I would like to believe that we will arrange such fun for, for them more often. So some very chilling words uh, from him if he actually said them, which he didn't, uh, since this video is actually a deep fake broadcast by this Russian TV channel. Uh, the fake video was actually cut out from two extracts, two different interviews. Uh, this first one from March 6 from Ukrainian TV, where we see the two journalists uh, as the same in the fake claims uh, with uh, this interview with uh, Ukraine's top spy chief. Uh, then the false clip also added this interview uh, using Danilov's face uh, from this interview and added an AI generated audio clip over it uh, to say what it's uh, what he says in the fake claims in order to create a fake interview that we see circulating on uh, social media. So deep fake from Russian sources broadcast on Russian television uh, spreading lies about what Ukraine was saying and trying to make make out that Ukraine was involved uh, in the attack. No evidence exists that it, it was. Uh, there are two other examples you have circulating on social media that uses claims shows an involvement uh, from Ukraine in the attack. Tell us about those. That's right, Mark. Here we just have two examples uh, to show because uh, immediately after initial reports of the attack, uh, pro-Kremlin uh, Kremlin, uh, bloggers were already spreading many fake elements on social media that showed, according to them, Ukraine's involvement in uh, the attacks in Moscow last week. So first we have this example uh, shared on X where we see uh, four different Ukrainian uh, passports that users uh, say belong uh, to the alleged uh, terrorists when in reality none of these uh, documents can actually actually be linked to the Moscow assailants. We'll show you. Our fact-checking colleagues at, uh, Minute, at, at Van Minute actually found the identity uh, to each uh, passport. Here we have the first one. Uh, this actually belongs to a man that was wanted by the police in Ukraine in 2020. Uh, then uh, this uh, second image actually belongs to a Russian uh, blogger who uh, obtained Ukrainian citizenship in 2016. A third one right here uh, actually was an extract from this photo from a Russian Wikipedia page on Ukrainian passports and as for the fourth identity we have it right here uh, this is a Ukrainian uh, passport or identity prototype that was published on the Ukrainian government uh, on 2020 so four Ukrainian passports yes but none of them belong uh, to a uh, Russia's concert hall assailants and we'll show you one more example a uh, mark a very viral example that's been seen over two million times on X uh, where users claim to show with this video uh, that this was a very suspicious white van that was parked right outside uh, the Krakow City a parking lot uh, when in fact if we zoom into the picture of uh, this van uh, the plate doesn't actually correspond uh, to Ukrainian license plate it actually corresponds uh, to a license plate from a Belarus with the two letters at the end the hyphen and the number so two examples that we showed uh, that users uh, have been spreading on social media to try to prove Ukraine's involvement in uh, Moscow. So more bogus claims exposed. Uh, fake news articles to Catalina being spread by uh, Kremlin bots. Remember, of course, there is that uh, bot factory just outside St. Petersburg too. Uh, tell us a story about this. 
That's right. If faked or cloned news articles uh, that belong to doppelganger. We've talked about that a lot here at Truth or Fake, which is Russia's major disinformation campaign against the West, where they cloned major news articles uh, this time around to push the narrative uh, that Kiev, the UK and the US uh, were responsible for the attack in Moscow. So here's uh, two examples. This first one, this is a cloned uh, news article from Spiegel, uh, which is a, hence it's fake, allegedly with this title that says legalized terrorism. A terrorist attack in Russia raises the question of Ukraine's cooperation with the Islamic State group. Then we have a second article. This is an unauthentic news article. It doesn't exist. It was created by this operation, a doppelganger, with a fake title that reads terror attack in Moscow. What could Ukraine and the U.S. have uh, to do with it. So uh, this is all part of this uh, Blame Ukraine uh, campaign, uh, not only pushed by Putin, but also by pro-Russian bloggers on social media. And also, it's also part of this entire disinformation campaign trying to point fingers at Ukraine. Mark. And no mention of the fact that the uh, U.S. provided intelligence to Moscow that said there was an imminent attack and they chose to ignore it. Catalina, thank you very much, Adifa, for the truth and the fake on that.